Good morning and welcome back to another video here from the Offcut Garage in sunny hot Australia. Look at this, the weather forecast as usually at the beginning of the video. Do you actually care? Probably not. Uh, we've got 10 amps outside. What can you do? Well guys, thank you so much for all your hundreds of comments under my last video about the JK BMS 4S edition. At least I think you believe that many comments because the video is coming out tomorrow morning. I'm yeah, that, that confuses me as well sometimes. As I said in the video, I want to do a follow-up video about the about the fault which occurred with the JK BMS. So um, at the point of filming and recording all this, it wasn't quite clear to me, but um, after a few days now, I can probably um, elaborate on this a little bit more and can explain what has actually happened. So we discharged the battery with over 200 amps at this point of time, right? And the timer setting in the JK BMS sits on five minutes. So this is basically the delay in seconds it takes the BMS to turn off if it goes over these 200 amps. And quite frankly, that's exactly what has happened. We have discharged the battery with um, 203 amps. And then after five minutes, it disconnected the load as per the settings. So that was exactly what the BMS was supposed to do as per my settings. Unfortunately, in this process, one of the MOSFET transistors popped. It cracked, it half exploded, there was a bit of smoke. Oh. And it turned off the inverter, turned off the load as it was supposed to do, but the BMS was still working fine. That was the confusing part because the first thing which came to my mind was that was it. Smoke the BMS completely. I definitely need a new one from Hangsaw to keep testing. But no, that's not the case. The BMS is just fine. It totally kept working. No visual problems at all. And I actually took the BMS already apart in the last video, but I didn't put this footage in because the video was already a movie length long. So I thought probably it's better if I put this in this video here. So have a look at the footage when I took this apart and inspected the BMS. Okay, I think here comes the big moment. I hope I can... Oh yeah, that wasn't too hard. So let's see if we can see anything burned or exploded. No, this side looks actually good. Cannot see any marks on the MOSFETs. Okay, let's have a look on the other side. What is that? Well, I cannot see anything. Ah, yeah, up here, here, somewhere here. Yeah, in this area here, somewhere. Nah. Yeah, definitely up here somewhere. Yeah, it has this electronic burn smell. So I think one of them, or at least one of them, has shit itself, but I cannot really I cannot really tell which one. Not sure if you can see this here. Definitely on this side. So the only thing I can see, I'm not sure if you can see this in the camera here. This one leg here is a bit darker than all the other ones. And it has like a little bit of a of a shine. It looks solid. None of these ones. They, they all look the same here. This one looks different. So it could be, could be this one, which exploded. It could be, because there is like a, yeah, none of these ones have that. It's like a little, um, like a notch. It could be this one. There, it has a little mark. Very hard to see. Oh yeah, from here, from here you can see it. There. I think it's a crack. Yep, yeah, that's the one. I think this is the one which shit itself. It is cracked. There you can clearly see the crack. There you can see it. There's the crack. See? See, you can see the smoke traces on the other side there, on this MOSFET. 
looks like white powder or something. This is where the MOSFET exploded. But yeah, definitely you can see the smoke traces here from the explosion. Ah, there are some parts actually. Look at this. There it is. A very tiny piece of something. And this came out of this crack here. Oh yeah, oh yeah, here you can see it as well. There are some smoke traces here. Some burn marks. And this is exactly where our friend lives. Well, that's actually not too bad for a 200 amp high current disconnect. We lost only one MOSFET. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what do you think? What has happened here? So we can clearly see one of the MOSFET transistors, presumably one of the discharged MOSFET transistors has a correct case now and this is exactly where the smoke traces are, where we could see the black marks on the case. Well, this is a cheap Chinese product made in China from Chinese components. What do you expect, right? And people probably think now, uh, I probably don't buy the JKBMS, the quality doesn't seem to be as good as Andy always says in his videos. Maybe I better buy a DALI or a JBD or any other BMS, but not the JK. It explodes. I guess we can do a lot of speculation now on why this has happened and whose fault it actually is. So what I can see, I have the BMS again open here for you. And um, well, this is the MOSFET which exploded. You can see the crack there, maybe you can't. Yeah, you can see a little bit of, of crack there in the case. So this is the MOSFET which has exploded, right? And we can see we've got 5, 10, 15, 20 MOSFETs in parallel and the same on the other side as well. So 20 of them in parallel for charging and discharging function. If these ones are all for charging, I don't know in which order they are being designed and soldered on the PCB. But let's assume these 20 here are responsible for the discharging. And of course, they're all getting the same signal then at some stage when the controller says, okay, this is an overcurrent situation. We all have to turn off the load now. And they did, except this one, I believe. And um, this is the uh, MOSFET they have used. It's the G023N04. I have pulled up the specs of this MOSFET transistor here on the screen. And as we can see, this one has a drain source voltage of 40 volts with a continuous drain current of 120 amps at 25 degrees or 85 at 100. Um, during this discharge test we have conducted a few days ago, we were certainly somewhere in between about 50, 60 degrees or something. So I would say we've got like 100 amps of continuous current then at this temperature. And I would say this is exactly what has killed this MOSFET. I believe it was either a faulty MOSFET from the beginning or maybe it has something to do with the design of the board, which I don't believe. And I assume all the other 19 MOSFETs, they had already turned off and this one was still conducting. Even quickly going back to the specs, we have a pulsed drain current of 570 amps the MOSFET can withstand. It doesn't give us any indication how long this pulse can be actually. I just assume again here the pulse was too long, right? The, the MOSFET died because of the current was too high. It was over this 120 amp max current the MOSFET can withstand, can hold at 25 degrees and it just died. So, and now it has a really high resistance, doesn't work anymore, but all the other 19 around it just work fine. So, uh, what we have basically done is now we have taken one of the 20 MOSFETs out of the system here and using only 19 MOSFETs to control our discharge load. That's why the BMS is still working fine. It discharges, it um, disconnects the discharge as it did before. So before at 200 amps and we have got 20 discharge MOSFETs, every of the MOSFETs gets 10 amps, right? So this is a very, very safe current for each of these MOSFETs. And now because we have one less, 
basically we are spreading 200 amps across 19 MOSFETs only. So every MOSFET gets um, half, is it half an amp? Around half an amp more of current now. Instead of 10 amp, it gets 10.5 amp. I think this is still pretty, pretty safe. And there should be no further issue with this BMS, even there's one MOSFET not working anymore. Because I had a look, um, you, you, of course we can replace this MOSFET, but for how, I mean, I can unsolder these two legs, but just the gate and the source, but the drain, see the drain is cut off here and is soldered on the back of the MOSFET onto the PCB directly. How do I, how do you repair that? See, this would be the only contact area for the MOSFETs I have with my soldering iron here on top of the MOSFET. I can potentially get this off, but how do I get the new one back on without overheating it while soldering? Let me... It doesn't really... It doesn't really tell us what the maximum temperature is they can withstand. They talk about 100 degrees during operation, but for soldering we need 350 degrees or something. And I'm, I'm not sure if we are not making the situation worse than it already is. This one will definitely peak out a bit, I assume, because of the soldering in between. Because this is all machine soldered here, very precisely soldered. Um, I have no idea if I can get this done with a normal soldering iron. Uh, leave your comments down below what you think, if this is possible at all, or if you just should leave it as it is. So, as an overall verdict about this little um, situation we had in the test of the JKBMS 4S edition, I don't think it is a problem with the JKBMS or its design. It is just an unfortunate situation that we had one of the MOSFETs cracking, popping, exploding, going up in smoke during our test operation. So I don't blame Hanks or, or whoever soldered this PCB together here for this problem. I, I got in contact with Hanks and explained what was happened and and Nami got back to me straight away and said she's so embarrassed that this has happened. And she was talking to the engineers and they said this usually can only happen if you have these BMSs in parallel with other battery banks as well. We definitely did not have any parallel connections of batteries here or BMSs or something. It is just an unfortunate situation. It is 100% not their fault. It is 100% not my fault. I would say it is probably just unfortunate that we had one MOSFET not coping with this high current. Shutting off a tiny bit later, that's just a theory. So let's blame the manufacturer of this MOSFET, right? Yeah, guys, let me know. I personally, without reading your comments because I haven't published this video yet, I personally would not care about this one MOSFET. Put the BMS together, keep testing, keep using it as normally. 200 amps is the maximum continuous current anyway, which I won't have with this BMS. And even if so, every single MOSFET transistor gets half an amp more of current it needs to cope with, which should not be a problem at all. And I guess this is all part of the design of such a BMS as well. You know, you keep the temperatures down because the, the load or the current spreads across all your MOSFETs and they are not heating up that much. That's why we don't see so much heat in these in these BMSs. Even they are pushing 200, 250, 300 amps. They, they don't get warm because the current per MOSFET is so small. And now it is just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit higher. I personally wouldn't care too much. But yeah, guys, let me know in the comments down below if you think this can be repaired easily with a normal soldering iron, not with a laser, solder, whatever special machine some people may have. I have no idea. Because they are soldered on both sides of the PCB here, I cannot see how this will actually work. How do I get a new MOSFET on this PCB? No idea. Okay guys, this is just to explain what was happening during the test with the 4K version of the JK BMS. I, I didn't want to put this in the other video because it was already like six hours long. As always guys, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for all your support here on the channel. It is great to have you here. And until the next video guys, stay charged, stay safe. And thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye.